Good morning, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bethel Baptist Church here in Pontyclean. I'm sure you know my name. My name is Kyle, and I am the pastor here. <laughs> right, I'll tell you, the reason I always say it, because we don't know who's watching, we don't know who's in the building, it's just important that people know who I am and know who the team is. Anyway, less about me, who cares about me? Uh, we're continuing our... Uh, way to serve series and actually this is the final week so we'll be wrapping the series up this week and the service is going to look a bit different to how it usually looks and I'll, um, John will talk a bit more about that lately uh, later but the reason that I am on the stage is because I think that in church is important that we um, show our appreciation for people and I'm sure most of you know that this is Luke Hall's last Sunday at Bethel before he goes to America. I'm going to ask Luke actually to get off the balcony and come to the front of the stage please. Let's give Luke a round of applause whilst he's doing that. And I, and I did ask Luke where was he sitting and I guess he's going to sit in the balcony and us. The long walk he's taken. But yeah, I think it's important in church we honour people for all they've done at Bethel. And I'm sure you guys will agree with me that Luke Hall has done so much in terms of production. Here he is. Get on the stage with me. Get a, come on. What's happening? Take the mat. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we just wanted to honour Luke in his last Sunday here. Um, he's been a fantastic youth leader and he's done a lot since I've taken over and I know with the production as well and, and everything else, when COVID hit, you were here quite a lot, doing a lot of the, you had to be, he wanted to be, it was a, it was, it was a want, it was a wanted to be, I'm sure it was, but yeah, it's important and we wanted to do it because as a church, we love you, I definitely love you and um, my team, how is that funny? <laughs> what, what's wrong with saying that? I, I love you. <laughs> but we've got a few things um, to give you today to show you how much we value you, how much we care about you. So Alex Brown, what a trio this is. What a trio this is. So we've got a few gifts and we're going to give them to you one by one so you know who they're off. One by one. Well, okay. so <laughs> this card is from the youth leaders and the young people at Bethel. Best gift. As a youth pastor, I thought I'd get you something valuable, and I've got you a few books. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't care about them. Oh, oh. The, the wine gums, and these are the best um, presents we've got you, I think. So the first one is from the youth leaders, and this is the Wales Away Welsh top. Good size, good size. And then this one is sort of from all the church um, as a gift for you. And that's the, wee, wee. That's the, that's the um, home Cardiff City top for those guys who don't know him. We know Luke loves his football. So we thought as you go to America and you play a lot of football, I why not represent. represent some of the best teams in the world and those books as well, which I'm sure you'll have a go at reading. But why don't we pray for you as, as you go on. Please chat to Luke. Um, as is his last Sunday, I'm sure loads of you will want to chat to him, but he'll be around after the service. Um, yeah, chat to him, and he'll explain his mad journey to going to America. Got it? Got it. Let me pray for you. Okay. Yeah, Jesus, we thank you so much for Luke. We thank you for what you've planted in him, his, his willingness to serve you wholeheartedly, Lord. To go the extra mile in serving your kingdom, in the youth ministry, in the production, and, and everything in between now, Lord, that he served during his time at Bethel. We thank you for him. We thank you for Hannah, his fiancée, who is, is going to marry him in, in the next few weeks, Lord. We thank you for that relationship, Lord. We pray that it will, it will grow, it will blossom into everything you have called it to be, and they will be united as one and they will do everything that you ask them to do. But we thank you for Luke. We pray a special blessing over him. And, and in the years to come, Lord, may we see him back here, and may we see his, his friendly face. So yeah, we just pray a blessing over him and everything that he does in the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So why do we give Luke one more round of applause? <laughs> Thank you. 
so like I said, um, we are continuing our Way to Serve series here at Bethel. We're at the last week, so I'm going to invite John to come up, and he's going to uh, chat to you about some of the logistics, but also I'm sure he's got something else to say. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just inviting John. He's going to he's going to he's going to chat some. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. It's yeah. It's great to see you all. It's a it's a really weird week for us as a family. Uh, lots and lots of different things happening, and sort of um, emotionally, you're sort of up and down. But um, just so excited um, about what's happening with Luke. Um, you know, we'll miss him as a family, miss him as a church. But um, our, our loss is someone else's blessing, and uh, two are stronger than one. So Hannah and Luke as a ministry couple, uh, I believe, will do things uh, in America, may even do things across the world. So, um, yeah, we're, we're so, so pleased. I wanted to say as well, Luke probably didn't want to say this. If you do want to watch the wedding, it's week on Monday. Uh, ask Luke for your, uh, give Luke your email address. It'll be on Zoom. I think it's Zoom, Luke. I think it's on Zoom. So, um, yeah, do that. But on Wednesday, last Wednesday, we uh, had a really, really special service in the church. Uh, and Kate, who is here this morning, but I'm not allowed to look at where she is in the room because um, you might all want to say hi to Kate, who's just sitting <laughs> <laughs> over there. Uh, Kate particularly uh, wanted to be baptized by Jackie. Um, and um, so we put together this mad crazy plan on Tuesday night that Kate would be baptized on Wednesday morning and that happened uh, and we we're really really sad that the whole church couldn't share in this wonderful experience with Kate and Jackie and myself and um, Kate's husband and her friend so we did a really short video so to start the service we just want you to see uh, this video and then I'll oh and if you carry on after that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, Kate, have you uh, asked Jesus to come into your life and take away all of his sin? Yes, I have. And to the best of your knowledge, will you try to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? I will. Okay, well, I'm going to say that we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then you'll go and then. Okay. So, hold your breath. Okay, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we baptize you. That was awesome. Um, if you'd like to stand up, we're going to praise God now.
going to release the children, but they've already gone. Falling on 
Father God, thank you for this morning, thank you for this moment. I'm just thinking where else would we want to be this morning but in your presence. You are worthy, you are mighty, you are majestic, you are magnificent. You are our Savior, you are our Lord, you are our God. You're our king. You're sovereign over every single situation and circumstance. And we love you and we worship you. Father God, I thank you for what we have. I thank you for who we are. And I thank you for what you're building here in this place. Be honored, be praised, and be glorified in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Owen, uh, Toby, and for those of you that don't know, uh, the lady with the hat is actually called Drums, um, <laughs> and uh, we, we, we love, we love the, the band and we love what they bring, um, but Bex is called Drums, but hasn't drummed for such a long time, and we just, just love what you bring and love what the worship team bring. Thank you so much. It, it's not easy um, to lead, uh, to lead worship, to lead churches in the current climates. Uh, everyone is tired. Everyone is sort of, oh, when's it going to end? And I, I, I don't know, <laughs> but I know that I serve a sovereign God, and we worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and we hold on to that, don't we? Whatever the journey is, and whatever that looks like for each and every one of us, that's who we are and that's what we do. So this morning is the last in our Here to Serve series and it's called Where to Serve. And uh, you'll have come excitedly this morning knowing that the service is going to be a little bit shorter, although Owen and I chatted about that, but looking at the time and how things are going, it's probably not going to be that much shorter uh, than a normal service. But after the service, there'll be opportunity to go around different stations. There's some at the back, some in the foyer, uh, foyer, and some in the coffee lounge. You'll be able to chat with people and ask about their ministries and how, uh, how their ministries work and where you might be able but to uh, be connected and included into that. So that's going to happen uh, at the end of the service. So if you do need to rush off, uh, please do that. But if you want to stay behind for five or ten minutes, just walk around. There's some leaflets and different things that people have got for you. Where to serve? So this morning is uh, based around 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm going to read that. We haven't got Cheryl uh, today, and we miss Cheryl when she's not here. But I love that Cheryl's not here because I find out who's brought their Bibles to church. And some of you are awkwardly looking for your phone or, or trying to find the Bible. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 12 uh, through to the end. Where to serve, and it's all around the body of Christ. The body is a unit, though it makes, it's made up of many parts. And though all of its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Let me read that again because we're halfway through quite a long scripture and some of you would be starting to think about your dinner. <laughs> I love verse 22. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Can we just receive that? I'm not preaching on that. I just want you to receive it. Those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. You might be here this morning. You might think, I don't have a place. I don't fit. I'm not important. Those parts that seem to be weaker are indispensable. That's three times. I'm not going to say it again. Verse 23, and the parts that, think, uh, that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatments, but God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should, be, should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, 
every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Verse 27, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first of all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, and all those having gifts of healing, those able to help each other, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but eagerly desire the greater gifts. May God bless his word to us this morning. On November the 13th, I was watching a football match. It's not, as you get to know me, that's not unusual. I've watched a football match last week, uh, Wales against Belgium. It was great. I've learned lots of new songs as well. I won't be singing them to you, but um, I've learned lots of new songs, and I've learned that sometimes Christians accidentally sing the words that they're not meant to be singing, uh, and I'm one of those that uh, fell into that uh, category. I was uh, singing a song about us being sheep, um, liking sheep, and uh, slipped up, and everyone laughed at the other words that I said. But I've learned lots of new songs, and you'll be thinking now, during the sermon. Uh, What were those songs? I think Carl was at the game as well, but I didn't hear him singing uh, any of those songs. But I watched a game uh, uh, on the 13th of November from um, Beacon FC. And Luke and Kyle play for Beacon FC and uh, some other people. And it's the team that Chris Bullock runs. And they were playing very well. They played against the team uh, and they beat them 5-0. Wow, that's amazing. Um, I wasn't singing any songs on the sideline. Luke, Chris, Paul, and two others scored. I think Kyle might have scored, but I I don't really know uh, because he scores quite often. The boys were buzzing. They'd they'd won won this game. They were hugging each other. I think at one point when somebody scored, they did the thing where they jump right onto each other and like hold each other in this like tight embrace. And they were really, really pleased that they'd uh, they'd won this particular match. Now, Jackie, Hannah, and myself attended this match down at um, Pencoid. And we watched the game for 90 minutes. It was about 80 because we got there a little bit late. Then we missed a bit of the second half because we went and bought coffee. But we enjoyed ourselves at the match together. But we didn't feel all that connected. And I reflected on that in the series that we're in. And I was thinking, why didn't uh, Hannah, Jackie, and myself feel all that connected in, uh, to the particular game? Now, they'd won 5 0. There'd been a few goal scorers. There'd been some good play, and there'd been lots of excitement uh, around. Well, what had happened was Jackie had wandered off. She'd wandered off to, uh, to look at the sheep. There were sheep around uh, near, the, near the pitch. And she was taking photos of the, these sheep. And some of you might have seen them on Facebook. And she was uh, uh, stroking them. And, uh, and Luke actually scored qu- quite a, a, a magnificent goal. And he said, did you see my goal? And Jackie said, I'm really sorry. I was looking at the sheep. <laughs> and, and Hannah, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Hannah, Uh, said to me, I said, how do you feel, Hannah? She said, I feel cold and I want the toilet. (laughs) And I stood there for about 80 minutes telling Hannah how I used to play football and how I used to be quite good and how I remember uh, playing on that particular pitch with those particular people. And then I was thinking about us as, as church and I was thinking that's a great analogy of us as church that, you know, you're, you're in, in this environment today and some of you will be absolutely buzzing. There'll be great things happening. You'll feel the presence of God close to you. You'll feel the Holy Spirit uh, speaking uh, words of encouragement and uh, words of truth into your life. And some of you will, will be here and you'll be thinking, um, you might be thinking about sheep. You might be thinking about other things. You might think, well, I, I, don't, I don't really belong. I, I don't really have a place. I, I don't feel particularly important or special. And some of you might feel cold as we've had the doors open. And some of you might want the toilets. And some of you might be, as I was when we were playing, thinking about the days that have gone by. You might be thinking of the days when 
you were in the worship band. The days that you preached. The days that you led a ministry or were involved in something that was really amazing. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago. And your life was different then. And your children were younger. Your children actually came to church. And everything was wonderful in those days. But not for now. Well, we were just simple spectators. Nobody asked me about the tactics. No one even asked me to play. I, I, I can play football, you know. I'm very good. You see, we don't just look back, do we? We look to now and we look to see where God is going to use us and how things will look for the present. Live in the moment, live in the day. It's an analogy really of how we can sometimes feel in church. And I want to tell you that you're welcome here. I want to tell you that you belong. You might not believe me. But I want to tell you that. You see, I've had some problems with my tennis racket. And I've gone through um, how to serve. And earlier on in the series, I said, when you serve, please don't grunt. And some of you thought that resonated. You see, when we serve the Lord... We serve it for him and his kingdom and for his glory. We don't serve him for ourselves and our own self-gratifications. But some people, when they serve, they, they grunt. Some people, when they serve, they serve in the wrong place. And uh, apologies to Sal and Anna, who brought their small child to church a few weeks ago. And I served just over there. I don't think they've come back. <laughs> I'm scanning the balcony because they might be hiding up there. No, no, they found another church where the minister is more accurate with his <laughs> tennis balls. <laughs> but don't serve in the wrong place. Because it won't be good for you and it won't be good for the church. And ultimately... It won't be good for the kingdom. So we're going to scootle through um, this wonderful passage of scripture. And we begin with Christ as the head. And, and there's a phrase that happens sometimes in Bethel. You're the boss. I, I'm definitely not the boss. God's called me for a purpose and a time such as this, and I'll walk in that calling, but I'm certainly not the boss. Core team, they're the boss. No, no, Christ is the head of the body. And it's in him that we live and breathe and have our being. It's in him, in Christ, in a connection, a relationship with him that we live and breathe and have our being. And I want to ask you this right at the beginning. Have you, have you committed your life fully to him? Because you could go around the stations afterwards and chat with some nice people and say, yeah, yeah, I, I could help, I could be involved, I could do this, uh, I've got this th and that and the other. And the people would say, oh yeah, that's great, we could do this, that and the other. But you know what? It won't work if you're not fully committed to Christ. Did you know that? That if you're not fully committed to Christ, then you're not going to be fully committed to the church. And then you're not going to be fully committed to serve. And then you'll be doing it for the wrong reasons. Because all that we do, we do it for him. We do it because of what he, come on, of what he has done for us. I, I serve. I served long before I was a pastor. I serve because of what he has done for me. He is the head and everything flows through him and from him. 
We see in verses 14 to 17, it's a wonderful picture. And I'd encourage you to study this at home if you've, when you've got more time. We see a wonderful picture of people with an inferiority complex. I want to be an ear. <laughs> You're an eye. <laughs> I want to be a nose. You're not a nose. You're an eye. You're an ear. And every, everybody, come on, everybody wants to be someone different to, the, to who they currently are. That's how we were brought up, weren't we? I wanted to be Gary Shaw. No one's ever heard of him. He was an <laughs> Aston Villa football player from the 80s. But you know, the quicker you can embrace who you are, the better it's going to be for you and for the church of Jesus Christ. Embrace who you are. Don't try to be someone else. There'll be no division in the body. If we find out who we are and we find out where to serve, there'll be no competition, there'll be no division, there'll be no battling, there'll be no, there'll be no one-upmanship, there'll be, no, there'll be no ladder that exists. And we know trying to get up to be something else than you currently are. Just be who you are and embrace it. Embrace the ear, embrace the eye, embrace the leg, embrace the foot, embrace. We could sing a song, couldn't we? Hands, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. I'm trying to get in the worship band. You never sing that with children. But it's so important in the church that we embrace who we are, we embrace where we are, and we embrace what we're called to do. Verse 18 is a pivotal verse. And if you study this and go through it, verse 18 is a pivotal verse. God has arranged us into the body exactly as he wanted us to be. There are no accidents, there are no mistakes. There are no mistakes where you are, where you were planted, you are, the, are then meant to flourish. There's no mistakes, there's no accidents that in verse 18, God has arranged you to be here in this season and in this moment. Whatever age group, whatever your ability or disability is, God has arranged you to be here in this particular moment. Verses 21 to 26, we all need each other. We all need each other. That's how the body works. And you, you know about your physical body when it's not working quite so well, that, that, that it affects something else, and then it affects something else. We're, Jackie and I had a friend who was a physio, and she could tell what was wrong with somebody by the way that they were walking. And you'd be going, oh, my, 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 my back is hurting, or my shoulder is hurting. She'd say, that person's got a problem with their knee. I'd be like, wow, that's amazing. A problem with your knee, but your shoulder's hurting. But you, you, you're, you're walking like this, and you're leaning that way because we compensate, don't we? And then other things will be happening inside us that we can't even see. Absolutely amazing and incredible to think about how our body works. But we all need each other. You need me, and I need you. We all need each other. I don't do this very often, but look at the person next to you and say, we all need each other. Max, Maxine hasn't got anyone. We all need each other, don't we? We all need each other. Gives me a chance. This is a preacher's trick. And then he gives them a chance to look at their notes. <laughs> I didn't realize this until recently that that's what, you know, these American preachers, they go, and say to the one next to you, God loves you. And they go, Right, okay, and then we're going <laughs> to... So I, I, you're always learning, aren't you? Always learning. But we all need each other. We really, really do. And I love the sense of unity that's here, the sense of love that exists in this church. You might have wondered where the banners have gone. They're, they're now uh, on their way. I love God and love for others banner. They're on their way. We all need each other because of what Jesus has done for us. And the final section, 
is that God has given you gifts. God has given you gifts. And in church, you see, uh, most people think, I, I don't have the jump around gifts. I'm not, as, I'm not as strong as I used to be. Anyone ever think that? I'm not as fit as I used to be. The old brain isn't working quite so well. There's a misconception that exists in our churches. That if I can't lift something, if I can't chase a child across the floor, if I can't jump around with youth, I'm of no use anymore. I'm just going to rattle off some gifts that you can do right where you are. And you can serve right where you are. The gift of faith. You want to serve the church with faith. The gift of prayer. Serve where you are with prayer. Prophecy. Encouragement. Do you know some of you serve every single day with encouragement? Just a smile. Just a tap on the shoulder. Just a, how was work this week? The gift of care, the gift of helps, the gift of administration. You've heard me say many, many times, I really, really suck at administration. It's, I, I just hate it. I hate administration. It just gets on my nerves. It just gets in the way. But some of you just love it. You love a spreadsheet. Give me a spreadsheet. Give me Excel. It's happening. Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the gift of giving. You notice that we don't take up an offering. Have you spotted that? Anyone spotted that recently? But you know what? You give us. You tithe. You're online. There's a little basket out there and you put things. But the gift of giving, sacrificial anointed giving. The gift of healing, the gift of teaching, the gift of worship, the gift of preaching. As I come to finish this shortened service, <laughs> we, we, uh, and we're going to hand back to Alwyn in a minute in the team I'm just going to encourage you to say three things you don't have to say them out loud and you don't have to say them to me uh, by the way this is the altar call <laughs> You might not have noticed it. You might want to say that I belong in your family. Jesus, thank you for saving me. You might want to start there. See, it's a, it's a heart commitment, isn't it? I belong in your family. Thank you for saving me. You might want to say, I belong at Bethel, and God has a place for me here. And you might want to say, I'll do my best to explore what God wants me to do. I'm going to pray and hand over to Alwyn. Thank you. Father God, thank you so much for this morning. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you so, so much. Thank you for, thank you for saving me. Thank you for dying on the cross. And every single ounce of your body cried out, I love you. Every single part of your body took on my sin and the sins of this room and the sins of this world. 
Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful church. It's got a name, and it's called the body of Christ. And I thank you that there's a place for every single person. I pray, Father God, that you will touch people this morning. You'll heal people. You'll save people. You'll convict people. You'll draw people into a deeper relationship with you. I pray this in Jesus' name and for his glory. Amen.
Just take that moment. I stand in awe of you. Thank you, Father God, for this moment. Thank you for what you, you have done, for what you have said, and for what you have accomplished in this place. I pray for every one of these precious people that are here in the building, and every single person that's watching online. I pray, Father God, that you'll be with them. I pray that you will help them. And I pray that you would take them from where they are now to that next step. Father God, we love you. We worship you and we give our lives to you. We pray that you will be honored, you will be praised, and you will be glorified. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much for coming. Um, if you've got children, you have to go and pick them up. And then uh, stay for a little while. The service was shortened. Well, actually it was lengthened, but uh, there we are. You never know what's going to happen. But stay for a little while, chat with people. And um, yeah, thank you so much for coming. God bless.